stay cool. I don't know if you know this. Thor News is for winners, and that's why you're here. To so stick around. Hit the button, baby. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. I'm over at physics.org talking about how a 23 million year old brown dwarf flash is brighter than the sun's most powerful flares. All right, we're talking about the sun, crazy solar activity, and brown dwarfs. You can color me happy. You know what's weird is I'd say the happy color for me would be blue, but that's not usually a color associated with happiness for some reason. Although astronomers often refer to brown dwarfs as failed stars, apparently those astronomers are failed astronomers because this mopo is flaring like a superstar. You feel me? Scientists at the University of Delaware have discovered that at least one of these dim celestial objects can emit powerful flashes of light. Oh, learn something new every day. And what we learn today is that these failed stars are apparently getting an A plus in solar activity. Isn't that weird? I mean, you don't see like a car giving off a solar flare. I guess that's, 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 that's a bad analogy. A research team led by John Gizis, professor in UD's Department of Physics and Astronomy discovered an ultra-cool brown dwarf known as 2 mass 0335 plus 23. And this has a temperature of only 4,400 degrees Fahrenheit, and it can generate flares stronger than our suns. Well, I'm sure our sun can generate some pretty strong flares. Because this reported on the findings on June 13th at the annual meeting of the American Astronomical Society in San Diego. So was this brown dwarf in our solar system by any chance. And how the hell do you know how old it is, man? To this day, I don't know how you guys date stars and brown dwarfs. Um, I don't know if you take them to movies and popcorn, and then you ask them, hey, brown dwarf, how old are you? Or maybe, since you're scientists, you just assume you know the answer. I don't know. This brown dwarf is very young, by our star standards. Only 23 million years old. Is this said? It has lots of flares that are as hot or hotter then the flares coming off full-fledged stars. Okay, and what makes a star a star, man? You know what I'm saying? And are we gonna see Jupiter start to flare anytime soon? Or have we already seen it? This shows that the warmer brown dwarfs can generate flares from magnetic field energy just like stars. Yeah, all right, this is great. So, brown dwarfs get an A+, old astronomy as we know it gets an F. Next thing you know, your Christian disk theory will be blown out of the water. Uh, but they'll always have dark matter because you can never see it, never smell it, never find it. If you can't find it, you can research it forever. This shows that the warmer brown dwarfs can generate flares from magnetic energy just like stars. Our work shows, however, that colder brown dwarfs cannot generate flares even though they also have magnetic fields. Ooh, but do they have ice volcanoes? That's uh, sarcastic. Sometimes science is like, it has ice volcanoes. And I'm like, how is that even possible? You know? All right. Brown dwarfs actually begin life just as stars do. From collapsing clouds of gas and dust. Bullshit. But they don't get big enough and hot enough for hydrogen and helium to fuse at the core generating the nuclear reactions that keep a star burning bright for millions and billions of years. All right, that goofball theory is still in existence. Gazis and his team, including doctoral student Rishi Powdell and collaborators from the University of California, San Diego, and Harvard University made the findings using NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, which monitored the brown dwarf every minute for three months. All right, I bet you could make a fantastic video of this brown dwarf. You see, that's a lot of minutes. I'm my calculator. Dude, you guys have 259,200 photographs of that flaring brown dwarf. I believe I and the public would be fascinated to watch them. What do you say? What's, so say we all. So say we all say, show us the damn photographs, man. Like, instead of a stupid bar chart, that's an amazing flare. It's one of the most amazing calculator flares I've ever seen. Can I, can I see some video that you guys caught of a brown dwarf being born? How about even a star? I'll take a full-fledged video of a star being born. What? Thanks. Sage is sending it to me right now. Are you serious? Wait. Wow. There we go. Oh my god. Alright. Sage just sent me this. I bet it's gonna be awesome. Here we go. What? Wow. Really? Wow. Are you... Are you serious? That was it? That's... Uh... Well, I guess after seeing these, what, 20 photographs, I don't really want to see the 200,000 of them. <laughs> what do we have here? Like a three pixel variable sweet that's improvement there's modern science for you yeah like how can you tell yeah okay from i can totally tell okay i'm sorry from doubting you 
I can totally tell from these photographs that this brown dwarf is definitely 23 million years old. You know what I'm saying? Sage says it's the top pixel on the left. I say it's the bottom, bottom pixel. Wait, does that sound gay? I'll have to pick a like, more heterosexual one. I think it's the one on the right. There you go. I think it's the pixel on the right that proves without a doubt that that brown dwarf is 23 million years old. And you know what? From that pixel, I can definitely tell it's a brown dwarf and not a Jupiter or not like a Venus or or not just a giant asteroid. You can definitely tell it's a brown dwarf, man. Like, it is a classic flaring brown dwarf. That is definitely what you call activity. All right. And why don't we put up some new telescopes that have some modern technology? Just an idea. Pouring through thousands of images the size of a postage stamp, the team searched for spikes in brightness, and oh, did they find them. Suddenly, it would get twice as big for two to four minutes. That's what she said. This happened a dozen times over the three-month period. Wow, that's what he said. It was only four times a month. I would definitely be grouchy. These flares are very powerful. Stronger than the sun's. They show what the sun could do when it was younger. There's a whole weird sexual stars and scientist vibe going on here that's leaving me uncomfortable. It's like it's acne is going away. What? Oh God, space pimples. Stellar pimples in your face. On your face. Gazis said Riley of the sun, which is middle-aged, now at four and a half billion years old, 200 times older than this brown dwarf. What? I don't know. Reading that hurt. I don't know why. Gazis actually discovered the brown dwarf in 1999 at a party when he was a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst working at NASA's two mass project, the two micron all gas survey, which returns two to four pixels. It is now known to be part of the Beta Pictoris moving group, an association of stars born at the same time and are all moving in parallel space some 63 light years away. They were all originally part of an interstellar cloud, an amalgamation of dust, gas, space plasma, and unicorn poop, all held together by a giant thingy of dark matter. And dark matter is the essence of the evil dark energy lord that now rules over science. Totally facts. I couldn't make this shit up. When this cloud collapsed, the brown dwarfs got scattered into space like the seeds of a dandelion in the puff of a wind. There's no such thing as a puff of wind, man. Whoa. Sage is off microphone making lewd jokes and before you get too excited they're fart jokes buddy put it back in your pants because this said he hopes to learn more about ordinary stars by studying the most unusual and extreme ones like brown dwarfs <sighs> he's gonna keep studying these young things until he finds what he's looking for and i'm really not gonna make fun of that not gonna make fun of your photos anymore dude because they pretty much make fun of themselves <laughs> i'm gonna zoom in on the one. Oh wow we're totally zoomed in it's like tic-tac-toe, going real slow. God, I love brown dwarfs. It's funny, black and white dwarf is more like it. Among their most unique features, brown dwarfs do a complete spin every five hours. Oh, wow. They're like a trained seal. Can a brown dwarf balance a ball on its nose? Now that's a very short day. In some respects, brown dwarfs are a lot like planets, especially Jupiter. Wow, well, that's saying a whole bunch. In many respects, Jupiter is a brown dwarf, the gas giant in our solar system. I'm glad he pointed it out. And people are like, what the hell is a Jupiter? They end up being similar in size because they are failed stars and they get colder and colder with time, like a planet does. I know, dude, if you check Earth out, Earth's getting hotter, man. The core is getting hotter, the volcanoes are getting hotter, and then the carbon is hotting us all. It's hotting us, baby. A bit hotting. Also, they have clouds on them. With Kepler, you can see what the clouds do for several months. Wait, how could you make clouds out of those pixels, man? Yeah, how can you tell if those are clouds or... I, I, I mean, how does that, that doesn't look like a cloud to me. The guy's like, oh, no, no, dude, that's totally a cloud. You can tell because the pixel changes color a little, which totally signifies it's a cloud. All right. I really do like brown, brown dwarf science. It's just so easy to make fun of. But I believe in brown dwarfs, not like gravitational lensing or dark matter. You, know? you can see how much change occurs. That's the type of thing we're trying to figure out. Because this is looking for evidence of clouds and for planets, too. The brightness dims when a planet comes in front of a brown dwarf or other star. Flares can also impact planets. As space weather watchers will know, amen, they can tear your atmosphere off, which is like the equivalent of having your face torn off. It ruins your day and the rest of your life. When the sun blasts out a massive X-class solar flare, releasing energy equivalent to a billion hydrogen bombs exploding at the same time, Earth can feel the effects. 
and damaged satellites and communication systems to electrical power grids. We think there are probably planets around brown dwarfs, so the flares generated by brown dwarfs could be a problem for them. But as to whether such a planet might be habitable like Earth, this thinks that's a long shot. It would be more like a Mercury, which is pretty much fried. There's some debate about that. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we didn't used to think that they were that hot. But I guess they're hot. So I guess everything we know is broken. Okay, I can handle that. Well, it's been a fun brown dwarf article. Peace out. God bless everybody. Take it with a grain of salt.